हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ मनोज शर्मा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द एनालिसिस ऑफ स्ट्रेस द इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म इज दैट व्हाई वी आर ऑलवेज टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रेस द इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म एंड व्हाई इन आवर सिलेबस दिस सब्जेक्ट बेसिकली दिस सब्जेक्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज फॉर एज द normal strength of material is concerned and also as the advanced strength of material means we have two subjects in our syllabus one is the strength of material and other one is the advanced strength of material both subjects contain the stress analysis but the difference is that in the analysis of stress in the strength of material generally we are dealing with the in general two dimension stresses but when we go for the analysis of stress in the advanced studies so basically we go for the focus on the three dimension stress so today our topic of discussion is the stress analysis in three dimensions how the stresses can be represented can be uh, exchanged in three dimension mode and what is its importance in my today's lecture we will cover the following topics which will able to analyze the stress in the three dimensions so the following outlines we will discuss today number 1 that is state of stress at a point state of stress at a point second point we will cover that is stress vector third point we will discuss normal and shear stress components after explaining all these things we will derive the stress components in the rectangular coordinates that is rectangular stress components these are the very key parameters to understand the stress analysis once you know the stress concept fundamentals of stress in three dimensions we will discuss in the rectangular stress concept uh, coordinate system then definitely we can go for the important parameter that is the principal stresses and their analysis principal stresses and analysis so these are the uh, outlines of my lectures and definitely after getting the knowledge of all the factors we will able to explain the stress in the three dimensions and their analysis now we will discuss about the first point that is state of stress at a point it is very important to know why three dimension stress is important why it is necessary to understand the three dimension stresses uh, when we talk about the real scenario every uh, components whether it is uh, uh, made in the automobile whether it is made in the used in the aeroplane aerospace any component which is in the mechanical domain or in the any motion domain then it is subjected to dynamic stresses are the stresses which are always vary with respect to time or the loads vary with respect to time or you can say the load is also in the complex in nature it is not necessary that only static loading is a important parameter but the your load is always vary from static to uh, dynamic nature then complex in nature like uh, examples you can write down some examples like some examples you can write down 
Suppose take example of connecting rod. Connecting rod is generally used in the IC engines and we found that the, all the stresses acting in the connecting rod is three dimensional form. Also you can say aeroplane wings. Definitely when the aeroplane flies and the wings are subjected to 3D stresses. So in real sense it is very important to calculate the stress at a point. right? Before uh, proceeding to the calculation of the stress at a point, why it is the importance and why it is necessary to calculate the stress at a point? Because if I am not calculating the stress at a point, then I will never know which is the critical point where the critical stress will occur. And once I will know the critical stress point, then I can analysis and focus on the stress at a point. So it is very important to calculate the critical stress or critical point particular point in a body and that is the right uh, real domain where the component is more suspected to fail. So it is very critical point. So it gives the concept of state of stress at a point. Now before proceeding to the this uh, stress at a point in all details, first I want I would like to explain the about the stress vector because once you know the stress vector then we can understand the easy concept of stress at a point. As I discussed before discussing about the stress at a point in more details, we go for the stress vector because it is a basic terminology uh, which understand the how the stress act. To, to explain the stress vector, I will explain you by with the help of example. Suppose a body with have, suppose a solid body we have and I would like to calculate the stress at, at a point, suppose at point P. If I will cut this particular body with a plane 1 1, with I will cut a solid body with a plane 1 1 then definitely I can get the this type of profiles in two forms by after cutting this plane and definitely if suppose I will indicate the name A body, body B and definitely my point P will be the small point where I would like to calculate the stress vector. Now, again, if I will consider the point P into two fractions, suppose point P here and point P dash here, the same P point is divided into two groups because the body divided into two parts. Now, it is very important to Suppose consider a small element at this point P and P dash that is a very small, very small area. I am using the colored chalk to, can, to understand yourself. This is a small segment which indicates the area of a particular point. Now it is very important to define an area, we have to define the outward normal N that is a new terminology outward normal n to define any area. So basically if suppose I want to define this area or this area, so I have to define the outward normal n just perpendicular to this surface or this area and similarly here also outward normal n. So we have two outward normals, one is n dash, here we have n. This outward normal n dash and n will define this particular area. Now, if I will consider the area of this small domain, this small element is let del A and of course the area of this small domain is suppose 
del a dash why i am using del it's very small quantity we are considering the small element so it's a small domain so we consider the small area same concept apply to the whole body so now if under the equilibrium condition if body a will apply the force vector on the body b at particular point p similarly the body b will apply the force vector on the body a at point p dash then the force vector in for both directions will be it means the body a is applying the force vector let del t s on the point p similarly as per the laws of newton's third law a positive reaction force will call by the body b on the point p dash and it will be same in magnitude and directions as del t dash so we have the force vectors for the both the bodies both body a and body b and applying in the same point p dash now if if we, if we talk about the stress vector so a stress vector is nothing but the limitation of the this stress force divided by the particular area now as far as the stress vector is concerned if i want to calculate the stress vector for the so stress vector that is t dash will be equal to for this p dash point will be equal to force upon respective area so it will be limit del a dash tends to zero and will be equal to del t dash upon del a dash it means similarly for the stress vector t for the this is for the body a and this is for the body b will be equal to uh, similarly the del t is the force vector del a is the area so we get the limit del a tends to zero and that is equal to del t upon del a and that is the stress vector for the body b of course here we have to indicate the plane number if some indication is there so we are we are using the plane 1 so we can indicate that it's a stress vector for plane 1 or stress vector for plane 1 that is very important term here we can indicate the plane number why it is important we will discuss in the later similarly so so for under the equilibrium conditions the t dash t dash or t1 dash will be equal to t1 that is the condition of under the equilibrium so it is very important to understand particular point p at a cut by the plane 11 one, one, and we are getting the stress vectors in this form if suppose same point p will cut by other plane let's example the other plane is made by like this same point is cut by other plane that is plane 2 2 say plane 2 2 the point will be same but the plane will change initially the plane was 1 1 now the plane is changed to 2 2 so definitely the body shape will also change as by concern now if we cut by plane 2 then definitely we will get the other shape of the body like this we can get like this shape or uh, maybe like this and the point p will be same and definitely on this particular plane 2 we will get the other stress vector 2 since by up to the same procedure it means if we cut this point p with different planes then we will get the different values of different stress vectors so then again if it is a three plane third plane then we will get the different values so it is very important 
for an engineer to define the stress with respect to any plane. Because when the plane is changing, the stress vector is also changing with the same concept. That is why we are always says we cannot define the stress uh, generally, we have to define associated planes, associated direction cosines, then associated components to complete define the stress. So, it is very important the, when the plane is changing, the stress vector is changing. So, that is all about the stress vector. Now, we can come to the point state of stress at a point as I discussed previously. Now, the students are able to understand why the we are state of stress at a point is calculated. Because if suppose I want to calculate the state of stress at point P, then definitely I have to give the all the stress vector let let us plane 1, plane 2, plane 3 or n number of planes. Then I have to say the state of stress at a point Now, we have to now understand very easily state of stress at a point. If I want to define the state of stress at a point P, then I have to define the plane 1, plane 2, plane 3 and n planes stress vectors. Then totality of all the stress vector. It means at point P, so if I want to calculate the stress at a point P, then I have to calculate the totality of all the stress vectors to in each possible plane for plane 1, T1, T2, T3, T3, T3 like Tn. So totality of all the stress vectors gives the state of stress at a point. Now, after the understanding of the state of stress at a point, its necessity, it is very important to more clear about the normal and shear stress components. The normal component and the shear component, these are the two components which are, which are come from the stress vector. Suppose a body is there and I have to calculate the stress vector at point P. Then, if I will apply the stress vector to define this particular area, first I have to define the outward normal n. It is very important to define the particular area by the with the help of a outward normal n, just 90 degree to the surface which I have to define. So, it is surface that is outward normal n. Now, it as a component of normal n shear, first I have to give the stress vector which is acting at particular point P. Suppose T n is a stress vector at plane n. It indicates the plane. So, stress vector T acting on this particular point and it is n plane as indicated by the notation. Now, if I will resolve this stress vector into two components, one is perpendicular to the surface, another is the parallel to the surface, then definitely I will get the two components. So, just resolving this component, so one is resolution along the outward normal and one is along the surface of the area. So, we will get two components. So, this component will known as the uh, shear stress, it is more specific to use like this. The n is indicating on the top surface, the plane number is indicated on the top surface and that is your normal component. So, you can write down, it is a normal stress component and of course, it is a shear stress component as we know, it is parallel to the surface and the outward normal component is acting on the perpendicular to the surface and just parallel to the outward normal. So, these are the two components which are always 90 degree to each other and as per this concern the relation between the 
stress vector will be must equal to the normal component plus shear component acting on the end plane. Now, further if I will put this body in a coordinate system suppose x, y, z, suppose O, x, then y and z in three directions then definitely I can resolve this stress vector or you can say resultant stress vector into three components x, y and z. So, when this T n will be divided into three components one is parallel to the x axis other is parallel to y axis and z axis then definitely we will get three components just parallel to x axis we can get the uh, T x n suppose it is T x n then parallel to y axis it is T y n and of course, it is a parallel to z axis it is T z n. So, we will get the three stress vector again that is T x n then T y n then T z n. The T x n is the basically stress component in x direction. When we talk about the T y n, it is a stress component in of course, y direction. Definitely, when we talk about the T z component, it is a stress component in z direction. And we talk about the relationship between this, of course, it must be equal to T resultant must be equal to T x n k square, then T y n k square, then T z n k square and it is the again a relation between the stress vector and its component. So, it is very important and fundamental concept for the stresses, how the normal end shear component can be calculated how the stress vectors can be calculated and how it can be evaluated in these directions. Now, after discussing about the stress vector, state of stress at a point, then normal end shear component, it is very important to understand about the rectangular stress component. It is very key topic and it gives the three dimension stress scenario. Why we are discussing about 3D stress? why 3D stress is important, what is significance. So, all these uh, questions will uh, arise from this topic. So, this rectangular stress component, it may be rectangular stress component, today we will discuss about rectangular one, but maybe cylindrical, maybe spherical. So, we will consider about the rectangular coordinate system. If I will put a body in a rectangular coordinate system, that is O, X, y and z. I will cut a body in a rectangular stress coordinate system and the important is that first to understand the planes, then we can understand the uh, system. So, suppose it is a x y plane, it is our of course, y z plane and it is our x z x plane. So, if I will cut a body, if I will cut a body by y z plane, if I will cut a body in the y z plane, it is very important cut by a y z plane. Let us imagine it is a y z plane and I will cut this body with y z plane, then of course, the normal to this plane, normal to this surface of this body will parallel to the x axis. I again repeat, if, if I will cut this body, this y z plane, then the normal to this surface will always parallel to the x axis or and always with the normal component, means always perpendicular to the surface of a area. It means this domain will give me the normal component that is sigma x. Why is this sigma x is always coming? because that is again a resolution of the stress vector which is acting on a body 
suppose a stress vector T is acting here, then we resolve this stress vector, actually it is T x exactly we can say in x directions. So, this T x can be divided into one normal component that is sigma x, you can write down sigma x x 2, that is the normal component. And definitely in y direction and in z direction, when we resolve this stress vector, we will get two more stresses and both are shear stresses. So, this, this stress is basically, we can say this stress is tau shear stress because shear component, then x plane and y direction tau x y and of course, this component is x plane and z direction. It means one stress vector that is only T x associated with the three components, one is normal and two is shear. In other words, if I want to explain in proper way, I am getting the one normal component and two shear component in a single plane x y plane if I will cut by the budget plane body. So, basically this sigma x x then tau x y and tau is the component in the x plane. Now, very important it is, it is very important to understand the concept of this suffix. So, I will designate it is very important always the first suffix indicates the plane and second suffix indicates the direction where it is acting. Then same applying here plane direction plane direction. So, I will take example of this tau x y it means the x plane definitely here x plane is there plane is x x plane, but the direction will be y and the y is the direction because it tau x y, y is the direction, you can see the direction that is y, x plane and y direction. Of course, here x plane, but direction will be z, so we get a tau x z, tau x z. Similarly, here x plane x direction, you can see x plane same and x direction of course. So, by this suffix you can understand the concept of stresses, x plane x direction x plane y direction, x plane z direction. So, it is very ensure one stress vector T x, one stress vector that is T x having the three components like this. One is normal component and two shear components. Similarly, if I will cut this body by some other plane, let us z x then I will get the here some component. So, then I will get the y plane. So, in the y plane definitely I will get the component sigma y y or tau y plane x direction and of course, tau y plane z direction. It indicates the plane, first indicate the plane, second is the direction where it is acting. Similarly, in the z plane we can get sigma z z or tau z plane x direction, tau z plane in y direction. So, it depends from which plane the stresses are occurs. So, it is very important to define the stress with the plane and with the all the components. So, here we can see in the rectangular coordinate system, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 total 9 components to define the stress at a point. It is very important to define the stress at a point, we have to define the 9 components. In the 9 components, we have the 3 normal components sigma x x, sigma y y and sigma z z and remaining we have the 6 shear stress component 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, total 6 plus 3, 9 components we have to define to uh, exactly define the stress at a point. This 9 components are very important 
it values may be vary from point to point, from plane to plane and this gives the critical points where the component can be fell. So, when we put this components in a matrix form, the stress basically say stress matrix, it is simple straight matrix and it will be equal to as we have discussed, we have the three component normal sigma x x sigma y y. These are the three normal components and similarly, we have the shear component tau x y and tau x z and of course, tau y z and same tau x y, tau x z and tau y z. How this will come, we will discuss later on, but this it is very clear, we have the three normal components and remaining diagonally, you can say it is a uh, one type of three shear stresses and these are the three shear stresses. In uh, after some time, we will discuss this tau x y and this tau x y, exactly it is tau y x, but both are same, we will discuss later on, both are same, we will see. So, ultimately three normal component and three shear component, we, we need total nine components to define the stress at a point and that is called the stress vector component. If I want to calculate the rectangular stress component in a simple cube system, then you can say we can write down like this O, X, then Y and Z. You can write down in the matrix form also. Suppose Here, suppose this is the phase 1, in the phase 1 it is cut by the yz plane, then we get the three components, one is normal that is sigma x, we have discussed, then we have two components, these are shear that is tau x y, x plane y direction, then here we will get the tau x z. We we'll talk about the cutting by this x z plane, then definitely this surface will act acting and and acting on the suppose sigma y is acting on the perpendicular this one sigma y y and the two components here y plane x direction. So, we go for forward y plane x direction, it is tau actually as per the symbol concerned tau y x and of course, in z direction that is tau y z. Similarly, in the z faces, suppose this one is the main face or behind this one. So, consider this one. So, here again sigma z z is acting here and having the two components, one is y direction, one is other direction. So, that is tau z y and that is tau z x. So, these are the nine components which are very important to understand the three dimension stresses. Now, important term is this, when we talk about the rectangular component, a theorem is that we, we will see that tau x y and that tau y x, the difference is only direction, the tau x y acting on the y direction and tau y x acting in the x direction. But when you talk about their magnitude or you can say in the values, it is always equal. So, that is called the theorem of cross shear. So, as far as the cross shears are concerned, suppose a beam is there, why it is always equal and at this phase, suppose I am applying some force at this point. So, here I am acting always tau y x, here I am getting always tau y x. Y plane, if it is coordinate system and it is x, it is y and it is z, then definitely it is y plane x direction and here we are getting tau x plane and y direction, tau x y, same as the I have presented there. So, if tau x y will be 0, let m is in, if tau x y will be 0, so as far as the equality of cross shear, tau x will, tau y x will also be 0 and if it is not 0, then it is not possible to 
call a complementary shear by this tau x y. So, always say tau x y will always be equal to tau y x by the equality of cross shear. Similarly, other plane y z will always be equal to tau z y and tau z x will always be equal to tau x z. So, these are the basic theorem of the equality of cross shear. It is in very short explanation. Basically, when the suppose tau x y will be 0, then definitely complementary shear will also equal to 0 and having the same magnitude. That is why the both the shear stresses in the same plane will be equal to same nature or same value. So, we can say that tau x y and tau y x will be equal, always equal to 0 or tau x z and tau z x will always be equal to 0 and definitely tau z y and tau y z will be also equal to values. So, these are the equality of cross shears, these values are always equal and we will discuss in the later domain. After discussing about the stress vectors, then state of stress at a point and uh, of course, rectangular stress components, then we have discussed about the normal and serial stress component. This all covers the basics of stress in three dimensions. Now, in three dimensional stresses, of course, it is very important to understand the principal stresses. Because we have seen if a body is cut by n number of planes, let plane 1, plane 2, plane 3, plane 4, plane n. So, we are getting the different values of stress vectors. Suppose it is cut by plane 1, we are getting T1, plane 2, it is getting T2, then T3, then suppose Tn. So, some questions are always come in our mind. Is there is any plane which is having the maximum stress vectors, any maximum or which plane which is having the maximum of T2 or T3, many may be anywhere. So, some questions arise, number one, is any plane which is having maximum value of stress? So, it is very important sir to understand or to know which plane is having the maximum value of stress. Maybe normal, sometimes shear. What is the second question arise? What is the magnitude? Of course, it is very important to understand the magnitude of the stress. What is the magnitude? What is the magnitude? And of course, third what is the position of this plane? So, once we know the plane which is having the maximum value, so and its magnitude and of course, position, then we can analysis the critical point in the particular stress or we can design the component in safe mode. So, the stresses which are occurs in the principal plane is known as the principal stresses. So, in the principal stresses or occurs in the plane where only the normal component will exist and there is no shear at all. So, the stresses which are occur in the principal plane is known as the principal stresses and there is no shear stress at all on the magnitude is known as the their magnitude may be three roots in three dimension we talk about three dimension they are getting three roots we will discuss about the solution and the positions, positions means to calculate the their direction cosines of the plane. Direction cosines which indicate the suppose n of a plane. So, we will discuss about this uh, topics and we will clarify how it is occurs. Uh, as we discuss the principal stresses are the stresses which occurs in the principal plane and having the no shear component means the normal stress vector is always with the along the normal. There is no, suppose a body is there and n is normal, then of course, the stress vector will always be in the, is the direction T x n. So, T x n or T y n or T z n. So, we are getting always the normal component in particular directions and no shear at all. So, this plane is the principal plane and the act stresses acting in this plane is known the principal stresses. Now, let assume sigma is the principal stress acting on the plane having the direction cosines n and sigma is the principal stress as we have discussed. 
Now, the stress vector in this plane will be T n, let us T n will be equal to sigma into its direction cosine. When we divide this component into three directions, again T x n, T y n and T z n, we get the three components that is T x n will be equal to sigma into n x, then T y n will be equal to sigma into n y and if T z n then definitely sigma into n z. The totality of all these components will be equal to resultant, the stress vector. Now, when we talk about the solution of the this, how to calculate the sigma principal stresses, it is very important to rep, uh, recall the components given by the Cauchy's. So, we will just give the formula of the Cauchy's. So, by the Cauchy's equations, we know that Txn is equal to sigma x and x, then tau xy and y. I hope you are more clear about this component xz and xy like this. Tau xz is nz. Maybe you, I am using the same notations uh, nz, xz. Then tau yn that is equal to uh, tau now xy and yx both are equal, so I am using same nx plus sigma y and y. Do not confuse with sigma x, the sigma x and sigma xx both are same as I indicates, but by knowledge of uh, easy understanding we are getting just sigma x here. So, it is both are same. Similarly, sigma y y and sigma y is same, then tau x y, uh, then tau that is y z plane. So, it is uh, y z and n z. Similarly, T z n will be equal to that is tau x z n x plus tau y z n y plus sigma z z n z. Of course, yeah, sigma z n z it is up to us. So, these are the Cauchy's component from Cauchy's equation we are getting these equations and if I am giving the number of this equation, suppose it is equation number 1, it is equation number 2 and it is equation number 3 or you can say if I will compare the same, it is 4 equation number 4, it is equation number suppose 5 and it is 6 and if you will compare the same one or T x n will be equal to T x n, then T y n is equal to T y n, T z n equal to T z n and we will compare. So, we will come to know that. So, after comparing the equations, we can come to know that, that the equation will like this sigma x minus sigma into n x plus tau x y into n y plus tau x z into n z is equal to 0. Similarly, by comparing the T y n, we get tau x y n x plus sigma y minus sigma into n y plus tau y z into n z is equal to 0. Similarly, by comparing the T z n, we get tau x z n x tau y z n y and that is sigma z minus sigma into n z will be equal to 0. So, we are getting these three equations and when we are putting in the determinant form, then we can get we can get the values that is by putting in determinant sigma x minus sigma one component, sigma y minus sigma is other component and of course, sigma z minus sigma. So, we have the three normal component as it is, but in the form of principal stresses as we have discussed. Then here it is tau x y, of course, tau x z and it is tau y z. Of course, the same values will be copied here as I discussed of cross shears. So, the tau x y will come to here that is tau x y or y x both are same as we discussed. Tau x z of course, it will be copied here and tau y z. So, that determinant must be equal to 0 as per the equations. So, when talk about the solution of n x, n y, 
and NZ, there are two solutions are there. One is tribal solution, where NX equal to NY equal to NZ equal to 0. And for non-tribal solution, we have to go for the basic plane equations. How the basic plane equations satisfied? And as per the basic plane equations, we have to use the basic equation that is nx square plus ny square plus nz square is equal to 1. So, that is the procedure to calculate the DCs, that is the position of the plane or you can say direction cosines nx, ny, nz of the principal plane. But if I want to calculate the stresses, that is sigma in terms of three directions, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, x, y, z, you can say. So, 3D stresses that can be calculated by the derivative or you can expand this matrix and we are getting the equation in 3D form. It is simple mathematics, so I will put the equation on expansion, on expand we get the equation will be like this, like this, sigma 1 minus L1 sigma square plus L2 sigma minus L3 is equal to 0. How it comes? It is very important what is L1, what is L2, what is L3, where, where that L1, L2 and L3 stress invariants. These are the stress invariants. What is stress invariants? We will discuss later on. These are the stress invariants. I will explain you how it works basically. And the values of this stress invariants that is L1, L2 and L3 may be in this equation L1 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z or you can say L1 that is your first stress invariants. will be equal to the summation of all the normal components in x direction, y direction, z direction, you can x, x, y, y, z, z, both are same. It is summation of all the stress components in the normal plane. So, basically we are getting L1 here. Similarly, L2 that is the second stress invariance L2, it is equal to your sigma x, sigma y, one plane, sigma y, sigma z, second plane, sigma z third plane minus tau square x y y z of course and z x means it is a combination of the formulas where from L 2 we can calculate the L 2. These are the values definitely you can get the from the matrix table and the third component is L 3 it is very uh, big formula for this particular calculations basically. In L 3 you can get the values like this. Uh, it is a x y z plus 2 tau x y y z z x. Then again further you are getting the sigma x then y z then sigma y z x then sigma z x y. So, these are the values from where you can calculate the L1, L2, L3 and these are the stress invariants which once you calculate the L1, L2, L3, you put in this equations, then you will get the equation in cubic order, it is a cubic equation, you can just moderate the things, it is a cubic equation, sigma q minus sigma square plus sigma minus L3. So, it is a cubic equation, once again I am repeat. So, in the cubic equation when you put the values, you will find the three roots. So, this three roots from the sigma side that is uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. These are the three principal stresses. These are the three principal stresses. Top three, one is the maximum principal stress. Let us sigma 1 is the maximum principal stress. Sigma 3 is the minimum principal stress. 
and of course, one is the in between the maximum and minimum principal stresses. So, L1, L2, L3. Now, the important term is what is L1, L2, and L3? How the stress invariance indicates what its significance? Why it derived? So, I just would like to clear here. As name indicates, stress invariance. The stress invary. Basically, the stress invariance are drums which will not vary with respect to the change of frame of reference. Suppose, I have the L1, L2, L3 for the given matrix or you can say I have the stress invariance for the given matrix is suppose L1 is 4, L2 is 3 and L3 is 1. So, for the same frame of reference, if I will shift this matrix into principal form, then definitely after calculating the three roots, I will get the same value of L1, same value of L2 and same value of L3. The value of L1, L2, L3 never change with respect to the frame of reference. It is a very key point and it is very useful for the calculation of principal stresses. So, this always go for the cross checking once you solve the questions then go for the cross checking whether my L1, L2, L3 is same as previous or it is differ. If it is ok, then your answer is correct up to the point. And if it is not, then you have to cross check your questions or some values are missing. So, stress invariants are the values of the L1, L2, L3 which will not vary with, with respect to the frame of reference. So, it is very important terminology and of course, you will clarify the things. So, uh, after completing the principal stresses and then stress invariants, we can explain now the 3D stresses, how they are acting, what are the 9 components which are suitable or which are must be designate to define the stress at a point and of course, uh, what are the components in the principal stresses, why it is important, how to calculate the principal stresses, what is the importance of L1, L2, L3, these are all the values you are able to explain and of course, it will be useful on solving the some uh, mathematics problems in the stress analysis. So, end of this session, uh, uh, I hope you understand all the possible uh, theories which are important from subject point of view. Thank you, thank you so much.